The long-awaited, or at least long-discussed, Bitcoin halving is expected to happen over the weekend, and it'll slash the amount of new Bitcoin available on a daily basis. It's bad news for crypto miners. What does it mean for investors? We're looking at how to navigate the big picture with the Yahoo Finance Playbook. We're joined by Matt Balanswag, head of Go Network at BitGo, and Alex Felix, CoinFund co-founder and CEO. Guys, thanks so much for being here. We appreciate it. So I, I guess, first of all, we have to ask what's going to happen to the price, right? Because in past halvings, we have seen the price rise after it, but the market seems sort of bigger now in part because of the ETF. So I don't know if the dynamics are different. Alex, I'll start with you on what you think. Great. Thanks for having me on, Julie. Um, everyone should own Bitcoin. It is the best performing asset of all time with 153% annualized return from 2011 to 2024. Um, runners up like NASDAQ, U.S. growth, and even the S&P um, have not been able to keep pace with the returns we've seen. And despite four drawdowns of 75% plus since 2011, it's still alpha for portfolios. Um, in terms of you know, where we're headed here, um, if you look at past cycle highs, you know we tend to see explosive growth as we move through the previous all-time high. Um, last high, you know, suggested around a 250% move. And so that puts us in the 240K range uh, from here. Uh, so I think, you know, 150 to 200K could be achievable in the next year or two, but hard to put an exact time frame on it. You know, Matt, thinking more broadly about um, the crypto market right now, you know, coming into a news event like the halving, I'm just curious what you make of um, where Bitcoin sits within that overall trade like is it you know we have an altcoin summer again where are we at with you know ether we haven't talked a lot about ether over the last you know couple of months with this bitcoin run to record highs so we'll get through the having this weekend but where is the i don't know where are the vibes at i guess we'll say uh, in terms of the crypto trade today for sure and thanks so much for having me on um you know i, th I think from a trading perspective um, you know, you have to think about this kind of in two different unique lenses, one short term and one long term. It's a lot easier to kind of see this forward, uh, you know, using a long term lens. But if you're a trader and you're in the space and you have to kind of think about this short term, um, you know, I, I think, you know, the way to kind of position yourself to think about this is number one, like usually in the short term, um, this is really a, a non event. If you look at the way Bitcoin's performed in the month following each halvings back to 2012, in 2012, it, it only performed you know positive nine percent in the month following the halving. 2016, it was down ten percent. In 2020, it was plus six percent. So you know this could turn out to be a nothing burger kind of in the short term here. Um, it's only 450 Bitcoin delta that is no longer going to be on the order book on the, on the supply side. That's the kind of difference between what miners can sell you know tomorrow versus today. And uh, you know that alone on a daily basis is not going to move the price. That being said. In the long term, the 450 Bitcoin per day adds up. You know that's over 12 billion of net less supply, and you combine that with the 12 billion of net new demand we've seen from institutions coming into the new ETFs. And I think long term you're going to start to see a pretty significant move in BTC and the market at large. If you look at Bitcoin's performance the year following the halving, it was plus 8,000 plus percent in 2012, plus 285 percent in 2016, and plus 550 percent in 2020. So I think long term here, we could be set up for a pretty good move. OK, guys, so if, if we accept the thesis that it's going to go up over the longer term, um, the, the question then becomes, how do you take advantage of that? Do you buy Bitcoin underlying if you're able to? Do you buy it through these new ETFs? Do you avoid the miners like the plague because they're seen as maybe being disadvantaged by this? Uh, Matt, I'll take you first on this. For sure. Um, you know, I think I think, look, if you're if you're trying to trade minor stocks, it's just a more complicated version of spot BTC, right? They're basically derivatives of Bitcoin, uh, but there's also idiosyncratic risks to each of these companies uniquely. So unless you are an analyst that's willing to kind of go down the rabbit hole of, of looking and analyzing at each one of these minor stocks, um, you know, I would stick to the basics here. I think, you know, one way to trade this, um, you know, you have to have skin in the game. You have to be uh, a long-term bull on Bitcoin, you have to have conviction and own the spot asset. So it starts by just being a long BTC spot. You know, if you're trying to hedge some of the short-term volatility and chop that might come, you know, after this might be a sell the news kind of immediate event, you know, what you can do then is basically look to sell some BTC calls, maybe not too far out of the money. So something like an 80K June BTC call to generate some return, um, you know, that could be 5% return, kind of depending on the, the strike and expiry. 
um, you know, which is about 24% annualized to June. And then you could use some of that premium to actually go long calls on alts like ETH or other tail alts like Solana and even further down the rabbit hole uh, to take advantage of a big move up potentially later on after the halving is in the rear view. So, you know, that's one trade idea, but there are many out there. Yeah, and Alex, I'm, I'm curious how you also think about um, this, you know, prefer- what your preference is when it comes to vehicles, setups, et cetera, as we get, you know, both through this event, but a- again, in this kind of, uh, whatever, the fourth bull uh, market for, for crypto here, how you're, how you're looking at things. I agree with Matt. Um, you know, you want to you know, be long the spot asset and you can trade around that now with uh, many different uh, tools. You know, we have CME options and, um, you know, soon to have ETF options and, you know, short interest can be built up there. Um, but we, you know, generally have a saying in crypto, you know, not your keys, not your coins. Um, you know, people have lost a lot of spot Bitcoin over the years, so you always have to be careful. But but really the happening here, it's the least interesting thing going on in crypto right now. It's a great opportunity for us to have the conversation about Bitcoin, to say thank you to Satoshi for creating the first blockchain and solving the double spend problem. Uh, but what's on the horizon is this is the first all-time high where we've had regulatory clarity and institutionalization uh, around uh, crypto's main asset and, and its first blockchain, which is crypto, which is Bitcoin. But that's just one use case, you know, mm-hmm. non-sovereign collateral, digital money, um, however you want to sort of frame the use case around Bitcoin. And there's so much innovation going on uh, atop blockchain rails that this is really the you know first asset that people own. Uh, and you know they're likely to look for um, higher growth, you know, higher potential yep. in uh, other subsectors of uh, applications and uh, protocols that are being built to serve other use cases. Yep. For example, uh, stable coins, which are digital cash, are now producing 30% more fees than Bitcoin transactions. Yep. Um, so we've seen a use case of just moving you know digital fiat around on crypto rails. Um, we have a lot of innovation in gaming, in uh, financial um, markets, in AI, in many other subsectors that are just starting to adopt uh, blockchain rails. And I think yep. that as we start to see the fangs emerge, you know, everything outside of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Coinbase is yep. less than six years yep. old, and, and Bitcoin is kind of leading the way here. Uh, we're likely to see. Um, you know, a lot of other great opportunities to allocate more and in different, uh, you know, pockets of the crypto universe. Yep. All right. Great. We'll leave it there. Matt, Alex, thanks for the time and enjoy the having this weekend.